guys, so got a push day for you today. Um, and so again, our push days consist of chest, uh, delts, specifically more front delt, side delt, and triceps. And so again, a couple things I want you guys to think about or focus on for this workout. Um, you know, one is the context of the entire split the entire week. You know, so a couple things here. You'll see we basically only do one exercise for triceps. You know, so the notion will be, is that enough? Again, realize we have an entire another dedicated arm day throughout the week. And obviously we have a little bit of crossover, you know, through the entire workout. We're doing a lot of pressing stuff. Triceps are involved as well too. Um, and so again, this is just kind of our baseline for where we've started for Terrence's off season uh, mainly. And then we'll kind of just measure, see how things go and then progress or change as we need from there. Um, the other thing I want you guys to focus on is this workout was five movements in total. Um, so uh, a lot of people really have this notion. And if there's one thing I can convey to a lot of people is less is more, you know, it's kind of a big overwhelming, you know, overarching principle for everything I do with training is the notion as little as possible to produce maximal results. And that literally goes into almost anything. Um, so again, how much volume do you use? You know, how close to failure, how many working sets, all those types of things as little as possible to produce maximum results. And I think that goes for exercise selection as well too. A lot of people I think overdo it. Um, so again, they're doing, you know, for a single body part, sometimes six, seven, eight exercises per body part. And you gotta realize as far as your body is concerned, <laughs> some of the motions are almost exactly the same. It's very redundant. And I always use the example I did chest today. You know, someone will do a flat barbell bench press, fine exercise, but then they'll do a flat dumbbell bench press. Then they'll do a hammer strength flat press. And all your arm is doing is this. And so as far as your pec is concerned, it's the exact same range of motion. Might be a very similar loading pattern. Not really enough difference from exercise to exercise, in my opinion, to really warrant doing all of them. You know, so I always like to have that notion myself because I'm in the same boat. I mean, from when I started training, when I was 15, I always just thought more was better. <laughs> more was more would it just equate to, okay, if three exercises is good, six will get me twice as much muscle. And sadly, it doesn't work that way, especially when you understand things like recovery. Um, so I still always like to honestly kind of put pressure on myself to basically how few exercises can we do to get this done? Um, and especially depending on your genetics as well too. I mean, if you're watching this, odds are you're not Ronnie Coleman. If you're Ronnie, hey Ronnie, I'm a fan. Um, but if you're not Ronnie Coleman, you got to realize that recovery can very, very often be one of the biggest limiting factors. And a lot of guys are kind of right on that edge of recovery is the limiting factor, you know, and how much they eat. If you're a little bit more of a hard gainer, maybe borderline ridiculous. So imagine again from your training stimulus, if you can do something that's going to be adequate, um, but not demand as much recovery or something that's adequate and not going to demand as many calories, I think that's a very good thing to focus on. It really just comes down to efficiency. So breaking through our exercises, again, someone's going to have this idea, is, is, is it enough? Um, and the short answer is, in my opinion, yes. You know, from a chest standpoint, we start with a low incline barbell press. Uh, and again, really the way that we do that, slightly bigger arch, you know, arm path for both of us. Um, I think mine's a little bit of a higher arm path. Terrence goes a little bit more tucked. But basically, it's going to get pretty much all the pec fibers that attach, you know, really to the sternum and some of those clavicular fibers as well, too. And even to a certain degree, the way fibers work, especially with a fan-shaped muscle, is even where you have your upper arm kind of pointing will indicate what's doing the most work. But because it's a fan shape, basically the perimeters of that fan are pulling as well, too. So again, even if you looked at what are these clavicular fibers doing by themselves, yeah, if they're on their own, it might be more of this motion. But really what they do is they kind of teamwork with these fibers that attach down to your ribs. And the, the culmination, or basically it's the, I'm going to have the word right now, the word will come to me in a minute, but oh, the resultant of something pulling this way and something pulling this way, again, is kind of just providing backup or providing more pull in this direction when they're working together. So I say all that, just doing a low incline barbell press, there's really not a fiber of our pecs that we're missing. If we could do that well, we could recruit our pecs and progress to the point where you're doing four plates properly, not involving your triceps, not involving your delts too much, you're gonna have overall great chest development just from that. So keep that in mind. That one again is anything biasing a little bit more upper chest, but really getting your overall pec fibers. All right guys, so really simple, easy tip um, I like to give, uh, who the hell knows where I got it from, um, to help you guys feel your chest more when pressing. And so, you know, one is just taking the simple step back of realize basically your pecs origin insertion. You know, so basically has a broad origin, you know, some stuff down here from the ribs to the sternum to the clavicle and the insertion basically on your upper arm. So as far as your pec is concerned, it lives just crossing over this joint. So I think one of the big problems a lot of people have is when they press, they're just thinking up, you know, they're just trying to press the bar up. They know that they have to get it from here to here, which obviously has to occur. But what you're thinking about when doing that, 
obviously makes a big difference. Realize that everything, bodybuilding, everything in the muscle building world is all about an internal response. You know, if obviously you're just concerned about being strong or you're in powerlifting, obviously that's a different thing. If you do just want to get from here to here, that's fine. But obviously if the goal is to do here to here in the bodybuilding world, you're just trying to get your pecs as big as possible. Um, so a really easy thing to think about is again that everything's really coming across. And as things come across, that bar is obviously going to move up. Specifically, obviously from whatever bottom position you're in, whether you're up here a little bit or here a little bit, from here to here, your upper arm is just coming across your body. So a good way to do this without basically taking too much time and also works well when you're warming up is come and take a bar, start at the top, I think is the easiest place. So whatever grip you normally would. And just imagine if the bar was basically made of ice, how you could slide your hands across it. And there's actually some bars obviously that have this, that have springs in them. But imagine if the bar was made of ice, how you could slide your hands together. Just have that same feeling, except obviously without your hands moving. So when you unrack the bar, take it off, whether you're doing incline or flat, take the hands on there and feel like you're using your pecs, most importantly, to try and slide your hands together. And basically what you're gonna get is an isometric. However hard you're pushing into the bar, if you're not sliding is how hard basically the bar is pushing back into you with friction, keeping your hand from moving. So again, if you push with five pounds or 10 pounds of presser, Basically, it's almost the same as if you were doing a five or 10 pound like kind of cable fly. So again, start at the top, feel this press together type thing, contract your pecs. And again, that will help your body one, start to feel together, but also get your pecs contracting in the feel of, I want them really contracting as hard as I can the whole motion. And so when I warm up, I'll just do a couple reps of that in various positions. And again, the top for a whole lot of reasons is gonna be the easiest place to feel it because your bicep can do a little bit of that too as you start to bend your elbow. But when you're at the top, drive them together, squeeze the pec, I don't know, hold for three to five seconds, maybe do a couple reps till you start to feel some contractions, bring it down, and then try and again contract your pec to feel like you're sliding together. And the reason I say start at the top is when your elbow's bent, you know, especially from the bottom, you can slide your hands together using a bicep contraction, which obviously isn't what we wanna do. You wanna feel like you're sliding your hands together, still contracting your pecs. So again, like I said, not having to spend a whole lot of extra time doing this, I'm not saying this is like an hour long warm up. But when you grab an empty bar, do your first couple ones, maybe just do that from the start. Just do some isometrics there, bring it down a little bit lower, feel your pecs contracting from there, bring it a little bit lower. And then ultimately just do a few reps where you really almost kind of forget about your hands, forget about the bar, and just feel like, okay, can I contract my pecs from the beginning? And then again, just kind of feel like you have that slight drive together feeling the entire time you're pressing. And that's one of those things where nothing magical is gonna happen as far as from one workout to the next, all of a sudden you're gonna feel it perfect and your pecs are whatever, doing all of the work, but just kind of keeping it as just a really easy thing you can do as far as practice as rehearsal. I don't think people spend enough time actually practicing getting the most out of their movements in the gym. Um, and I understand too, at the same time, you don't want to waste a whole lot of time. You don't want to come into the gym when you're not actually training and just start to practice all this stuff. So make use of your warm up sets, aside from obviously just generally pyramiding up in weight, which I think is a great practice, you know, practice, you know, some of those things as well too, you know, as you're going through your warm up sets, think about some intense stuff, some internal focus stuff. And then by the time you get to your working sets, again, unless you've never felt your pecs at all before when you're doing pressing, you know, then you don't have to think about it as much. Then you kind of just get in and work. And over time, you'll be able to get more and more out of your pecs and hopefully have less other stuff uh, contributing that you don't really want contributing. From there, we go into essentially like a low decline fly. So again, it's that cable fly against the roller. Again, I look at that as a big output movement. So we go basically speaking as heavy as we can. And that really gets probably the few, few exercises get more overall pec major recruitment than that. Because again, everything is in line with those pec fibers. So especially all your lower pec fibers, especially all the stuff that attaches to the sternum, really between those two exercises, that's pretty much all of your chest top to bottom. And then the question is there, like, why would you do more exercises? Well, do you feel like you need more volume? And someone might, you know, so our baseline still for both of those exercises is two working sets. So again, between those two, we got four working sets. Let's say hypothetically, like I need more work than that. 
Well, then just do more work within those exercises. Those are already good exercises. Why would you go from an incline, uh, again, an incline barbell press to maybe, again, that example of an incline dumbbell press or an incline Smith press of the same angle? It would just be redundant. Just do more within that same exercise. So just giving you a couple things to pay attention to here for uh, fly variations. Um, I think one of the biggest variations or one of the biggest advantages to a fly variation, more so than the obvious, one of the obvious ones that everyone talks about, which is accurate, is to a certain degree you take your elbow out of it, right? So if you have a hard time keeping your triceps out of pressing motions, going to a fly can take the tricep out of it to a degree and help you isolate, more isolate the chest. I think one of the other big advantages is, is you're not fixed in a specific amount of internal external rotation. You know, if you're doing a barbell press, Obviously you're using gravity, you're gonna only go on one plane, meaning if you start to go like this, the tendency is gonna be able to drop the bar into internal rotation, rip off your shoulders. Or if you start to go this way, obviously you can gonna do that. So basically whatever plane you're in, when you're using gravity, you're basically stuck in there. And so the issue with that is, let's say you wanna do somewhat of a decline type motion, which I think has merit, you know, at the end you're gonna get in this kind of high elbow position, very internally rotated. And for a lot of people, <coughs> excuse me, especially as you come to the end here, that can be tough on the shoulder joint. Um, so I think one of the biggest advantages of fly variations is they can allow you to do decline type motions um, and still be a little bit easier on the shoulder joint. What's the difference? So again, what could be the difference is when I come up here, so let's say I'm doing more of a decline type motion. Well, instead of being stuck in internal rotation, imagine if you take your elbow out straight, and you externally rotate like you would for a fly, you're in this much more externally rotated position. And so now you can perform, basically your upper arm is going through a very similar path. So it's still this declining type motion, but you're in a more position of relative external rotation, which tends to be a little bit more comfortable on the shoulder joint. So that's one of the biggest advantages is it doesn't even have to be this position. You can kind of find your comfy spot. You know you wanna work in this plane, and now you have a whole bunch of options of being more internal, more neutral, even more externally rotated if that feels good. Because again, one of the big advantages of a decline type motion is it puts a whole lot of pec fibers right in line with your upper arm path and set up properly right in line with the cable path. So I've shown this one a billion times, but if this is your first time here, this is not a huge deal. Um, this just allows your shoulder blades to move a little bit better. So all this is is a half foam roller, costs five bucks, and this is called a lashing strap. And so again, lashing strap, you search that on Amazon, these are like a dollar. So if you wanna do this, great. Let your shoulder blades move a little bit better. If you don't, no big deal. Bench works great. I think a bench is a must. Um, and again, I say a, a bench here, if you're unsure the function of this, is the same function as a back pad on a leg press. So just think about how effective or ineffective a leg press would be without a back pad. And in my opinion, that's how ineffective flies are when you don't have your back on a bench. You're gonna be limited by how much you can balance and stabilize. So in my opinion, always use some sort of bench when you're gonna do flies because it'll allow you to use more load, more weight. Um, and then what you wanna think about, for me, is you have two options, really. You could set the cables up a little bit higher, so that's gonna be more in for this high to low path, or you can adjust your body position. So if you'll see, I'm trying to basically lean my body more forward when I'm in here, and all that will do is from the side here, is it'll, if you can imagine my pec fibers, obviously they kind of go this way, and as I get more tilted this way, the fibers run more this direction. So the direction those fibers are in, I'm trying to get my upper arm and cable basically in that exact same plane. And if the more pec fibers I can get in that plane, basically the more overall recruitment I'm gonna have. So what it'll look like in actual practice, and hopefully you guys can see, is I get a little bit of a big arch here. So I literally sit my hips forward, so I change my spine angle. Nice big arch in my chest. And then hopefully you can see my upper arm and the cable path. The way to know if it's all lined up is when you come to the finish, that cable should be basically right in line with your arm. And again, if you can see basically my upper arm is really well in line with a lot of those pec fibers. So this is literally how I'll perform it pretty much in this position here. Um, and again, you'll just get a ton of overall pec recruitment. And if you wanna have kind of an end goal in mind, you're gonna have probably the most of your pec fibers attaching here to your sternum, to the base of your sternum. If you tend to feel people's pec, pec major is the bigs and has the actual most tissue to the muscle belly, it's the parts that insert a little bit to the ribs, but base of the sternum, lower part of the sternum. And so that's really where I'm thinking is my end target with my upper arm. Even almost thinking like I'm trying to get my bicep right and plain with the base of my sternum. So tip there, getting the most out of your flies. One, use the back pad, but mess around with internal external rotation to see where you can basically have the most comfortable range of motion through that shoulder joint. And then again, I recommend this is probably, in my opinion, the best, safest place to do decline type motions for that reason. And again, I think decline motions should be incorporated um, because again, from just overall pec recruitment um, to a certain degree, properly set up, they're hard to beat.
So we're going to do that decline flat from there. And then from there, we do basically a high incline overhead press. So again, people get kind of caught up. Is it, is it a shoulder press? Do you have to be at a 90 degree angle, you know, to basically make sure it's truly a shoulder press? I don't know what that means. I don't care. So we probably have our bench around a 70 degree angle. And again, the main thing I have focused on here is front delt, um, but it can absolutely feel a lot of those, again, those fibers that attach to the clavicle of your pecs and attach to your sternum working a lot as well too. So that's really front delts. And again, same thing for front delts. That being the prime mover, you don't need a whole lot more. I'm trying to keep an arm path that's a little bit more tucked. So really between tucked in here and pretty much close to overhead, that's near the front delts full contractile range. So good loading pattern, not missing a whole lot. Um, and then from there we do our cuff lateral raise. And so again, that's my favorite one probably for side delts. Um, again, you can do the same thing standing, pretty much the same. I just like the bench to help keep me still. Um, or if you had a good machine lateral raise, same thing. I just want something that's heavy from the bottom and stays heavy, relatively speaking, through the top as well too. Um, so again, between those two exercises, we've got the front delt, we've got the side delt. I do rear delts again on pool day. And then after that, we finish with cable cross tricep extensions. And realize that exercise is pretty much training all the heads of your tricep through their full contractile range. Maybe minus the long head, you're missing a little bit of length. Uh, but even we finish there with a little drop set extended set right to an overhead rope extension. So arguably you're even training that long head through closer to its fully uh, lengthened range. Um, and so again, between those five exercises, pretty much we've got the near full contractile range of motion of those muscles. We've loaded them with basically as much force as they can produce within that given range. And so checking all those boxes for me, that's basically, you know, the equivalent of a full uh, push workout. We're not missing everything. Everything's fully trained. Um, and again, it's from there, it's, it's kind of obvious, obviously look at the weights that we're using relatively speaking. Um, uh, but obviously if your goal is to be Ronnie Coleman, just imagine, obviously if we progress, like I said, to doing four plates on incline, you know, we've got that fly with 50 more pounds aside. We're doing the overhead press on the Smith again with three, four plates, whatever it is. If you answer yourself this question, do you think something that I mentioned will not be developed to the point where it's extremely large? And I think most people know that, yeah, you're going to have to be pretty big to do all that kind of stuff. And again, the asterisk to all that is, you know, you do it well. So I talk about that a lot, but obviously form and execution are hugely important. Even those couple little tips I give along the way as far as what you're focusing on. Yes, you have to make sure that you're doing it yet well. You have to make sure that you're trying to have this internal result from all that stuff. Um, but again, done properly, done progressively all those muscles are gonna be pretty damn big. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives a full context for the workout. Um, again, obviously I think it's a great workout. Feel free to take it, run with it, get huge with it, progress it over time, um, or just take some of the concepts again and apply to your own stuff. Um, so as always, hope you guys enjoyed the workout. Hope you guys potentially learned something. Feel free to give me some feedback down below in the comments. Please give me that little thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And until the next video, I'll see you guys next time. Ooh. Mm -hmm.